Greetings, hello, hello. Okay, let's start by taking this thing out. You know how the hair rollers have that texture? It's that, but it's for, oh my god, imagine if I had a side fringe. Like I used to when I was, however old I was. I think it's meant to give you volume, but I just do it to, oh, oh no. That's not what I wanted. How did I do it last time? Evidently I've, yeah, said it the wrong way. Greetings, friends and family. We are gathered here today to do a chit chatty, get ready with me. I'm not going absolutely anywhere. I just felt like doing my makeup and I'm trying to film more YouTube videos. So that's where we are today. I'm gonna start off with Revlon Color Stay. Of all foundations, I used this foundation yesterday. I picked this up and I was like, that's gonna be way too light. Like that looks too light. So I mixed it with a couple of these. I've never really used these before. I've had them in my cupboard for so long. So I mixed these two together and it was just a beautiful finish. Let's go for like one, two. Okay. I don't know if you meant to mix these in with your foundation or you meant to do it with your skincare. It probably doesn't really matter that much, right? I've got this brush, which I used yesterday as well, which I really like. I think this is a natural hair. I think it's natural hair. Or it could be one of those synthetic ones that looks like it's natural. This is the Trini London blush slash bronzer brush. Actually, it's probably good that I did add those drops because it is a little bit on the lighter side. What do I want to talk about today? I had a few things. I Let's touch on the first one, which uh, I did I already kind of discuss on my stories, but I posted a TikTok and, and a reel about getting Botox in my forehead and why I like it. And to be honest, it was kind of just content. Like I saw someone else film a before after and then like a week or two after this top's gonna annoy me it's not sitting like flush it's like loose or something anyway uh of getting botox and i was like oh i love how satisfying this before and after is and how dramatic it was so i was like okay i'm gonna film that for myself and i did and i only got botox in my forehead as you can see i have i still have like movement but it's not as much as i did before and i can't frown and i just thought you know what i'm just gonna upload it like thinking how tame like 90% of the people that probably follow me get Botox and like know the benefits of Botox and you know, blah, 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 blah. Obviously a pretty big assumption to make, but I just assumed that was the case because generally now is the age where you think about getting it if you haven't already gotten it before. And I just assumed that I was just staying obvious. Anyway, I spoke about the main thing that I love about it which was that it gets rid of my forehead lines. So when I apply makeup, you can see my forehead's shiny right now. Like it's not, dewy or anything it's just my skin that looks like that and it's kind of like someone takes a little needle and sticks it into your forehead and goes and inflates your forehead because before it kind of feels like a little bit concave or something like the skin's kind of looks dehydrated it looks a little bit this is just my face i'm not saying everyone who doesn't have botox's face <laughs> my face it looks like my makeup has just settled into every single line. So if someone gets a little balloon and inflates your forehead, it just, it, it looks like it's a little bit more round as you can see. And it just, it's like when they inflate it, it like, <laughs> cause it's inflating, it's stretching the skin and all those little lines are being stretched out. It's like going from this to that. You know what I'm saying? That is my favorite, th favorite thing about it. I feel like I look, as I said in the video, older than I am when I don't have forehead Botox. I get it between my eyebrows and in my forehead. And I feel like I look my age when I do have it. And I feel like a lot of people that commented were like, yeah, totally get this, this is why I love it too. But a lot of people had no idea. And I guess they have those same lines and perhaps they don't like them. And so I had introduced them to something new. And that wasn't my intention, obviously. I wasn't like, oh my God, guys, we should all get Botox, woohoo. I couldn't care less what anyone else does with their face. I just found it interesting for my own face. Like that's just, <laughs> you know, I don't, again, yeah. Whoa, why does the white balance so wrong? Better, I think. I think it makes my hair look a little bit orange when I make the color temperature more warm, but better than it looking. This top is actually really irritating me. I think I might change tops. Oh, I'll choose a color that suits my nails. How about that? That'll do. <laughs> it was just really bugging me. Anyway, and then of course the video went viral. <sighs> which is cool, <laughs> but, mm. and I think some of the people that were commenting annoying comments or actually did, did follow me. So it probably isn't just because it went like viral-ish. I'm not used to wearing crewnecks. I've had taken a break from wearing them and it just feels weird. It doesn't feel right. I feel like so much of me is covered, but that used to be what I was used to because I've been showing more of my 
chest here. It feels, anyway, it's nice. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I actually think I do prefer showing more skin, which is crazy for me because I was the opposite of that. Anyway, so yeah, of course I got the people saying that I was a bad influence, that I should be mindful of the younger people that follow me. <laughs> Oh, anyway, I'm not gonna go into the whole rant again because it'll get me worked up and I already addressed it on my stories and you know, people were really supportive and stuff. <laughs> Two things that came from that. One is it just reminded me how much, I feel like if you want to annoy me on the internet, I shouldn't even be telling people this because the wrong people will find it and then they'll do it. Although now that I've said it annoys me, if people try to do it to annoy me, it probably won't annoy me, but the most annoying person on the internet for me is a self-righteous, holier than thou, in their own eyes, do better, full stop person. <coughs> Cannot stand those people. I don't know why it irritates me so much. There is something so fundamentally repulsive about someone who thinks that they are such a perfect citizen that they have the right to come into my house, my social media little world, and tell me that I'm not doing good enough and that I need to be a better person, trying to correct my behavior, telling me off. You are not my mother. You are not my father. You are a stranger and I do not care for your opinion and I never asked for it. Leave. Close the door, it's locked behind you, never come back. I don't need to be parented, I'm 31. And even if I was 15, you are not my parent. <clears throat> okay, so on that note, anyone in the future who ever says that to me, oh, <laughs> the do better for stop. <laughs> Look, I am open to learning from my mistakes if I actually have made a mistake. Like, hell yeah, like that's how we grow and evolve as humans. But it's the way you do it. <laughs> I use the analogy of someone coming into like my house and saying all your furniture oh no you need to change all of this you should put this there that there that looks wrong why did you choose that Ugh. versus I mean even coming into someone's furniture in, into someone's room and criticizing their furniture is wrong in the first place I mean even going I mean, there isn't really like a better way to do this unless the person asked you for their opinion. But just for the sake of this analogy, someone walking into your house and then saying, <clears throat> oh, maybe like compliment sandwich it. Oh, your house looks great. Oh, you know, a big lounge would look amazing here. And it might fill out the space even more. And then you could use that chair in this room or something like that, <laughs> you know. But better yet, don't ask, don't give unsolicited advice. That's like the number one thing. But obviously if I've said something problematic that I didn't realize was problematic or something like that, then like give me some constructive criticism. Hey Lauren, hey Loz, not sure if you realize, but this term or this phrase or this thing is kind of offensive to this group of people if you didn't already know, um, rather than you should know better. How disgusting, I'm unfollowing you, do better. Ew, cringe. Do you like my birds of prey stubby holder? Why isn't it moving? How does it move? Wait, why isn't it moving? How does this move? Or is it just, oh no, it's just a 3D one, I think. But you can't really see it anyway. With my Pepsi Max, my life juice. So anyway, that happened. Sometimes it's nice for me to get angry every, like once in a while though, you know, like I think that's why I get angry when I drive because I'm around people who shouldn't be on the road and it gives me an outlet to privately get angry <laughs> without like actually getting angry at someone. I don't know if that's healthy, but you know what? I think I'm a pretty nice person otherwise and I don't get into, like I, you know, it's cathartic, it's fine. I'm not hurting anyone, no one knows that I'm that angry. Like the person that I'm getting angry at who's driving in front of me probably has no clue that I even exist and has no clue that they're driving badly and has no clue that their bad driving is affecting me. And you know what? Good for them. Plus for ignorance, it must be nice. I'm gonna use the Fenty uh, Bright Fix Eye Brightener. I've been playing around with different ways of using this. This is in rose quartz. I've tried using it underneath and then foundation, nothing else. Underneath, foundation, then this again. And then I've tried using it found, uh, 
on top of foundation, which is what I'm doing now. And I think that works well. I'm just trying to find the balance right. Because the first time I used this with this foundation, I got like hardly any under eye creasing, but I can't remember what I did in that video. I'll have to go, and go, go back and watch it. But it's very thin and very brightening. And I don't really need a lot of like, I don't need, I don't need coverage underneath my eyes, which is crazy when I think about the fact that I was using uh, the Hourglass Vanish Cream Concealer underneath my eyes because that is like a thick concealer and I don't need, con I don't need, yeah, to conceal that area. Like I, you know, it's weird when you think about it like that. Like we should all be using eye brighteners or correctors to correct the darkness, I guess. In which case I probably should have been using that first, but you know what, that's fine. And then I saw a video of James Charles because apparently James Charles is now like the it boy again. God, you just love the internet. like. I feel like you can cancel politicians or celebrities and stuff, like people that have affiliations with other companies. Like, you know, if you find out that a celebrity is talking to minors or something and they have, and that they're working on a TV show or a movie or they have a brand sponsor, like you can pretty effectively cancel someone like that because those brands will pull their support or, you know, their affiliation with that person to protect their own image. Whereas influencers, they're kind of like cockroaches. Like you, you know, a group that doesn't already follow that influencer will cancel them and say, we, we won't watch them. But realistically, like they won't probably watch them anyway. The people that already follow that influencer are unlikely to ever probably really, I mean, it's, it's exceptions, but I feel like they're gonna come straight back because they can make money through their YouTube videos. They don't necessarily need sponsors. I mean, you make a lot more money with sponsors, but you know, they can still survive without sponsors. So I feel like it's much harder to cancel them, which seems to be the case with James Charles. Anyway, that's the before and after. I feel like I'm talking a million miles an hour and I'm just jumping from topic to topic, but this used to be a bad thing on my channel. People used to be like, oh my God, slow down. Now it's a good thing to speak fast. Thank you, thank you. My time has come. Everyone's attention spans are like, minute non-existent and it's my time to shine so let me speak a million miles an hour if you don't hear it if you can't hear it catch up <laughs> joking but kind of true i think this is also why i have a stutter because when i see my family or friends or something and i have a lot to say generally uh, my stutter comes back a bit more because i don't breathe properly <laughs> i just i say everything all at once because i'm so excited and I, there's so much i need to say and that's when i start tripping over my words because i'm literally like like I actually needed to take a big breath in. Anyway, James Charles is popular again. I don't even know what, I think he had like grooming allegations or something against him. I don't even know at this point. I don't stay up to date with that. I've never followed him. I'm not really interested in his kind of content. It's not for me. I'm, I'm too old. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm too old, which is fine. I embrace that. So he's come back, like he's, sh he's showing a different part of his personality apparently, which is humor. So apparently he's actually really funny. And probably always has been, but I guess he was tailoring his content to a different kind of, like he was presenting a different side of himself, which is what you do online. You pick the side that you think is, you know, going to be most well received by people, you know, brand friendly, all that kind of thing. So I guess that's just the way he's going now. And he was talking like, <laughs> he's kind of, and I say this not in a negative way, but his mean side no, it's not even mean. His assertive, slightly aggressive side has come out and I love it. He posted a video, I'll try and find it on TikTok of, oh, what was it? Oh, I can't remember it, but the, the essence of it was that people who leave nasty comments publicly are so cringe and I will bully you back. Like that's, that's basically what he says. If you bully me, I will bully you back. And you know, you're allowed to have negative opinions of people. Like that is a human nature. You're not gonna, you're not gonna like everyone you come across. But if you're gonna go onto someone's page and like publicly leave a hateful comment, that's so embarrassing. That's so embarrassing. Like send it to your friends, DM them, laugh about it, do it privately. You don't need to let that person know that you think that they suck in whatever way that they apparently suck. Like keep it to yourself. That's so gross. Like what a, what a massive character flaw. If you're, oh, why, why, am I, why am I adding more of this stuff here when it's already creasing? Anyway, massive character flaw, get some self-awareness. Imagine if that was you and someone was leaving those comments, I'm sure it would crumble your self-esteem within one split second. And that's what he was saying. It's like, if you're gonna come into my page or come into my space 
and be a troll, oh, gross. I'll give it, I'll give it straight back to you. And I feel like there was this thing online for a while, up until recently, I'd say, where the influencer was expected to be the bigger person, okay? This is Bondi Bell. These are two beautiful products from Nude Sticks. Worth a purchase if you're looking to spend money on makeup. That is what I will say. Uh, Bondi Bell Sun Kissed Pink. This one, Sun Kissed Pink. This one, if you wanna buy anything, this one. What's it called? Nudie's Matte All Over Face Blush Color. Sun Kissed Pink. Stunning, I love this. I use it on my lips now. I'll show you afterwards. I love this. And this is a really beautiful color, beautiful formula. Okay, done. It does come with a brush, but I don't, yeah, I don't use those. But good if you don't have brushes and you just wanna use it. Yeah, you, you were expected to be the bigger person because like you're the person with a platform. Because I was like, maybe this is obvious, maybe it's not. I am a very assertive person. I feel like I have dulled that side of myself down a lot up until these past few years because I don't like ruffling feathers. I don't like creating drama. I don't like upsetting people. I don't like, I just can't be bothered honestly. And I prefer the thought that people like me over the thought that people don't or think that I'm like combative and angry all the time on whatever. And it is, as I said, it wasn't really socially acceptable to stand up for yourself. Because I, <laughs> I remember back when my channel started popping off and like, I have never been through media training. Like maybe I should have been. Is I, <laughs> the person you see today has been built hateful comment by hateful comment or <laughs> year by year, minute by minute. Like I'm learning as I go and no one's ever like, let me remind you, I was one of the first people to find success on YouTube, in, at least in Australia. So like, I did not have a blueprint to follow. I was making it up on my way. I, I did not know what I was doing. And so when people would start leaving hateful comments, which is what, what happens when you start to reach a larger audience, I'd fight back. I'd go for it. Like, I think I insulted someone's appearance once, which is embarrassing in hindsight because you should never stoop to their level by insulting someone's appearance because especially if they can't help their appearance. It's, it's just a lazy insult. Insulting someone's appearance is just lazy. I don't even know what I said, but I think it was something like that. And I was literally, was I like 18 or 19? So my brain hadn't finished developing, okay? Let me catch a break. Anyway, I would respond to the negative comments because again, I want people to like me. Like that's just a fundamental human trait, I think for most people. We want to be liked. That's why we have so, all these billions of insecurities because we're just trying to make sure that we're not gonna be kicked out of the tribe or <laughs> whatever our ancestors used to worry about. So when people would be mean, I, I would really take it to heart and I'd either defend myself or reply and defend myself. I may not even be like combative about it. I might just be like, just, just, just acknowledging it by responding. I remember a lot of people, like a lot of people that were lovely, were saying like, you always focus on the mean comments and you don't pay enough attention to the nice ones. And that really flicked a switch for me because I was like, it's actually so true. Like it's, it's the, the sad truth is that you can receive 10 of the nicest comments you could ever imagine and one mediocre hate comment. And if that hate comment gets you in an insecurity, like if that touches on, on an insecurity that you already have, it's over. <laughs> that holds a lot more weight than a nice comment. It's very unfortunate, like fundamentally really depressing, but it is just the truth. Uh, at least it was for me. And I think that is this case for a lot of people, which is why I see a lot of new, like up and coming social media people responding to a lot of hate comments. Like on TikTok, I'll notice that if someone's video has gone viral, there'll be a hate comment somewhere and then there'll always be a video reply to that hate comment because it's obviously upset the person and they're not used to getting those kinds of comments. But now as a 31 year old seasoned, I'm not gonna call myself an influencer, I hate it, content creator, you either restrict that account so they think that they can still comment on your posts and stuff, but they can't, or well, they, they can still, but I don't see it and they don't know that they've been restricted. I block them if they're enough of a troll, By I almost don't even like blocking because I feel like it gives them satisfaction knowing that I've seen it and it's bothered me. So restricting is almost like just, they're just screaming into the void, like have fun. 
or I remove them as a follower, which means that they're just not going to see my posts anymore. Um, I'll usually do that if they're saying that, saying like they're disappointed in me or something. It's not that I think that you're, you're a troll and that you need to be restricted. I just don't think my content aligns with you anymore and I'm like forcing us to take a break permanently. <laughs> and so you just don't acknowledge the hate comments. You just, nothing good comes from that. Unless, unless it's something that a lot of other people in the comments are also saying and you want to address it. But if it's just one random troll being a troll, like don't waste your time. Focus on the nice people that they're the ones that are actually supporting you. Like protect your energy, you know? So yes, the expectation back then was that you just, I just stopped doing that as much. I stopped getting it. I mean, so, let's not be, let, 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 let's not lie here. I, I definitely do have my days where I take the bait. But they're not, they're not as often and it's usually if it really bugs me or it's something that has been building up <laughs> and I've been trying to ignore it for a while and then it gets to boiling point and I'm like, ah, like the hole comes out and I've just got to, again, I'm still respectful about it because I'm very self-aware about how I'm presenting myself on the internet and what I say and how it comes across, like I overthink everything. Which I think is a good thing and a bad thing when you're all online. You should be overthinking everything so that you're not saying something that's when I like unintentionally upset someone. Not that, that I ever would because I'm not a controversial controversial person, but you get what I'm saying, hopefully. I'm just rambling. Oh, stunning. So, God, I'm gonna spend this whole video just talking about this one thing. I mean, you're probably just watching me in the background anyway. It isn't like you're waiting for me to get to like one stage in my makeup routine. You're just watching this for something to do. So I'm giving you, I'm just helping you waste time. <laughs> and also this is great because you literally can just apply this. I don't know how this works. I apply this straight to your face and it doesn't take off my makeup. I mean, that's a lie. I think I actually did. I can see there is some like foundation on my, on this. But it hasn't pulled, it hasn't pulled it off my cheek when, when I look at my skin here, which is wonderful. So it was always this thing where you just take the, take the high road, you know, you be the b bigger person, you don't fight back. Maybe it was an age thing as well, I don't know. I'm 31, actually. I think a lot of it is to do with age, because you hear older people just... <laughs> They just don't care. You get to a certain point, like with each I mean, like five years that pass or something, you just care less and less about what other people think of you. I mean, you're always still gonna care to some degree, but it gets to a point where it's just like, nah, I will not stand for this. I will not stand for this. And I'm at that point now. If you're gonna bully me, if you are the kind of person, as James Charles says, that goes onto someone's page publicly and leaves a hate comment, you, Why should I have to cop your nonsense? Why should I have to swallow your nonsense? I have every right to give you a taste of your own medicine. And I don't think like, he probably takes it a step further by like, he, I've seen his TikTok lives and he actually insults people's appearances and calls them ugly. <laughs> calls them ugly and stuff. I would never do that. That's like, that's next level. Like I, I would never, <laughs> I would never call someone ugly as a comeback that's so wrong that's so intense but yeah if you say oh my god you should be a better influence for these teenage gals you are asking for an instagram stories rat yeah i will address those comments i'm not gonna address the i'm not gonna like maybe i will if it's bad enough but screenshot the exact comment i mean people put the pieces together like when I was saying that I was reading comments about how I'm not a good influence because I got Botox, oh, am I selling drugs? Am I hating on minorities? Am I spreading misinformation and dangerous? No, I'm getting Botox. So just so we know, I am the worst person alive and I should be locked up. <laughs> yeah, people put two and two together and they went to my post and they found the, the comments that I'm referring to. Now, if those people that leave those comments, like I replied to the comments themselves, and then I got a couple more and that's when I re respond to it because it just got under my skin just enough that it triggered a response or I felt like I was entitled to respond. And at the end of the day, I'm not calling my followers to go and, you know, retaliate and hate on that person or whatever. That's so cringe. But if that person doesn't like the comments that, that they're getting back, they can delete their comment. Like they don't have to leave it there. But I'm not going to protect you. You don't care how I feel. You don't care about how that, how your crappy 
troll comment makes me feel. Because you think you're better than me and you think you are Jesus and that everyone else is below you and that you should spread your your worldview on the world. No, you should force it upon the world. Like literally pin someone down and force it into them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having way too much fun with this. Oh, I just had to blow my nose because I'm laughing. And I want to reiterate, I am not saying that I'm not open to constructive criticism because I want to be a better human being if I say the wrong thing. Getting Botox is not the same thing as spreading hate speech. I just want to put that out there. I just want to clear that up. Those people need to get off the internet. Oh, wouldn't you just love to just get a peep into the person's life that is leaving those kinds of comments? Don't throw rocks in glass houses or whatever the saying is. Like, wouldn't you just love to put a little fly on the wall and just to see, hmm, where are all your flaws? Let me let me point them out and tell you how you can be better. It sounds like it's like really, really bothering me. It does bother me in the moment. Now, I'm not stewing on it. I'm just discussing it because I find it really interesting. I, saw, I, I thought his video was really interesting and I really appreciated that he had that viewpoint, which is to defend yourself. No, like sometimes if you're gonna be a bully, like, I don't necessarily think you should be bullied back, but you should definitely be set straight. How else are they going to know that their behavior isn't right and that they're literally being a troll? Ew, imagine if you just let them be that way. Like, that's how you learn <laughs> to be a decent human being. I wonder what other people think of that, that whole rant that I just did. Like, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm right or wrong? Okay, for my cheeks, I'm going to use the Natasha Denona Golden Highlighter Trio. I'm going to use this shade. I haven't set my face yet. But I'm trying this thing because I am trying to slowly, ooh, that was too much. I'm trying to slowly, uh, I'll just leave it, whatever. Acclimate to having not matte skin. <laughs> As I said, I'm approaching my mid thirties, you know, skin's changing, everything's happening. And I'm gonna get to a point where I really need to cut the cord with completely matte skin. There's a way in which I'm gonna do it though, because I don't think my face, when I don't set this area here, I feel like it accentuates my tear troughs. When this is matte, those areas aren't highlighted. I feel like my fake tan looks, I did a touch up of my fake tan last night and I don't think I should have on my hands. Yeah, I touched it up and then I went to sleep. That was a rookie mistake. It looks okay in person, but it looks really obvious on camera. All that to say, I don't think I'm ever going to not set those areas. I just need to adjust the way that I do it. I need to use lighter applications, lighter products, which this product is my favorite, the Kosas Cloud Set in Airy. Beautiful product, really, really light. As I said before, kind of like max mineralized, mineralized skin finish. And I use it with this. I don't know how on earth this doesn't look make it look cakey, but it doesn't. It just adds the perfect amount of product. So I apply it there, a little bit on my chin, because it does get oilier. A bit of my forehead here because now that I have Botox it is a bit a little bit shinier and then everything else I leave now it does like you can see that that is what I hate hate about having dewy skin it's a sensory thing I don't like things sticking to my face ah I hate it when your face is matte your hair doesn't stick to it but how much nicer does that look being I feel like it's a perfect balance you know it just doesn't look totally flat, especially on, on the cheeks. I think the cheeks being completely unset is it looks fresh. It looks fresh. So for example, that foundation with that concealer, that is the winning combo. Let me zoom you in. I've already done a video on this. It's, I'll link it below. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, let me use a clean cotton bud. So I I've always had these lines, okay? Most people have lines underneath their eyes. Some people have really, really unnoticeable ones. Some people have really, really intense ones. So mine have always been this way. It's gonna get worse with age. So I'm trying to show this to you. That amount of creasing is actually amazing. I need to like, <laughs> I'm creating creases down here now. That is amazing. Because by now, even though it hasn't even been that long, like that would have creased with most other foundations and concealers. So that is an example of me finding the right product combination where I can still get that matte look, but it's not going to look 
cakey. My makeup's not going to separate and everything is going to be right in the world. See how much better that, that looks? It could also just be personal preference as well, but I'm going to do some here, just press it in a little bit here. I shouldn't really be using the light powder for those areas, but I just have it on hand so it's easier. And then just a little bit in the very center of my forehead, just to keep a bit of that shine at bay. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I can feel that on my cheeks and I don't like it, but I'm trying to get used to it. Trini London Virtue Eye to Eye. Eye to Eye, that's just the, the, the product name. Little cream pot thing. I think I used a bit too much yesterday, so I'm gonna try and scale that back a bit. And then I'm gonna do my brows afterwards. Anyway, enough of that. I just think, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting thought that standing up for yourself should be become should become more popular because then it kind of like cuts off the air supply <laughs> to the trolls. Although some might argue that it actually gives them more air because that's probably what they want is attention. Anyway, on an absolutely polar opposite note, I started crocheting. <laughs> Literally the most opposite thing you could think of, like raging rant to I'm a grandma. No, my sister had, apparently she actually had done, been doing it a while ago and I didn't realize. But she got back into it, she was talking about it and I was like, huh, that seems like something I'll be inter interested in. My brother's ex-girlfriend used to knit and I always thought it was so cool that she would just be like, you know, she would like watch TV or something and knit while she was doing that. And I like the idea of that because I have a short attention span and it's gotten worse with age and perhaps TikTok. And I've never liked going to the movies because I feel like it's just so much time sitting in the same spot. And I want to be doing multiple things at once. Like Reese can't understand that my favorite thing to do if he's not there or doing something else is to, oh my God, I love this. It's the dream to put on a movie that I've either already watched or I'm not really, that I don't really care that, that, that much about. This is usually gonna be like a horror movie or something like that. And then I'll scroll on my phone. Oh, but, I, but it won't be TikTok or Instagram. It'll be window shopping. It'll be opening an app and window shopping. I love it. Just watching the movie in the background, shopping. Again, it's usually window shopping, which is just like looking at adding things to my cart and then checking out. Just love it, love it, love it, love it. But then it's not fun for him when I do that because it feels like, it's like when someone, it's like, like when you're watching a movie with someone and they fall asleep. It's like, well, part of the enjoyment was us watching this together. And if you're kind of checked out, even though I'm not checked out, like I know what's happening, I'm just not always looking at the screen. It's not as enjoyable, so I get that. But this way, I can do something with my hands, but I'm still watching the movie and I, I feel like I actually pay closer attention to the movie somehow, even though I'm like looking down for a bit of it, looking out, looking down. For some reason, I think I'm paying closer attention. Like the other weekend, we watched two movies back to back, which is four hours, and I I was fine. Ha! <laughs> totally fine, enjoyed it. Could have watched another two. It's insane. Yeah, it was a bit of a learning curve at first. I mean, it's, sorry, as if I'm a, a, a pro. It is a learning curve. <laughs> there is a learning curve, and I'm still on that curve. I'm still trying to straighten out the curve. But um, yeah, it's fun. And it's not like I'm planning on like making things and selling them or anything. I just, it's just fun to be creative. And yeah, it's nice to learn something new. So I've been enjoying that. I actually just got my first ever delivery of yarn from Shein, the most beautiful yarn you could imagine. And it's so cheap. I have been checking <sighs> the tracking every day, every day, because I've been so excited for it, for it to arrive. Cause I just bought some like ba basic yarn from Spotlight and I don't really, really like it that much. It's all the same kind of, thickness so I can't really do any, the kind of projects that I'm wanting to do. Like I bought some thicker yarns and some really soft fluffy ones. I want to try and make a beanie. And again, I'm not trying to make it perfect. That's kind of the nice thing about it. Like I want to make some blankets and I'm doing it for the fun of doing it. I said to my sister, cause she's like a perfectionist and she's been undoing all of her stuff and doing it again to make sure it all looks really nice, which of course like makes total sense. Like, you know, you're putting the time into it. You want it to be exactly how you want it to be at the end. But I was like, you know what? We've got to remind ourselves. It's the journey, not the destination. And it's so true. It really is the journey, not the destination for me, at least with this. Like I'm just enjoying the process. I'm not trying to be the best or to make it perfect or not that there's anything wrong with making it perfect, but I just find that that stresses me out when I do that. And I don't want it to be something where I put expectations on it. 
So that's been really nice. Anyway, I'm sure most people don't care. Um, <laughs> this is the Loud Face Brow Pencil in Torp. Okay, so this is not sponsored. There will be a sponsored video on my TikTok and my Instagram, which will have way more information. And I actually think I have sponsored videos from like a couple of years ago on my profile anyway, if you want to learn everything about this particular thing. But I feel hair removal. So I have only ever used my device, Braun IPL Silk Expert Pro 5. That's what I've been using since 20, 2020. I use it on my underarms and it removes basically all of the hair. I'd say there's like, for some reason on this arm I have more hair left and this time I've got like a couple of hairs left. This one I've probably got like five, maybe up to, up to 10, but I'm still treating it because I, tr I hadn't been using it. I literally hadn't used it for three years and I had that amount of hair, like I had that amount of hair reduction still. So the actual marketing claims is like up to one and a half years with the device that I have of, of like smooth skin. So I've well and truly exceeded that. So now I'm back on my treatment, like maintenance routine thing. So it worked amazingly on my underarms and the IPL device is amazing because you can do it at home obviously. I don't know if any of you have been around long enough and like if, do you remember when I had that issue with, I'm not even gonna mention the, the, the company name because they've actually wanted to work with me since. And I was like, no way, sorry. Like I'm sure all of the people that I had the issue with last time are no longer there or they have forgotten, but like, no, I'm scarred for life for that company. I would never recommend them ever. So that went down and I was like, I'm never going back to one of these salons. Every time I walk into one of those hair removal salons, it felt like I was walking into the popular the popular group in high school. Ah, no thanks. Oh my God. And then you're getting naked in front of them. Kill me. That is like an absolute worst nightmare. I, I am actually shocked that I ever even did that in the first place. Probably because I didn't know that there was an alternative. I have been using it on my underarms and then that, that was basically it. I didn't want to use it on my bikini area because I don't like skin shaving there because it gets so itchy and you can get ingrowns and stuff. So I just assumed that I just, because you need to shave before you use the IPL device. So I was like, okay, well, I guess that's just not really like a, an option for me then. I'll just deal with that separately. And then my legs, I was like, well, my leg hair is going to be too light because the IPL devices work with contrast. And yeah, I have really light skin, but my hair is also light there. The Lounge Face Brow Builder in Torp to set my brows and to fill out the beginning of them a little bit. So then I was so sick because... I shave my legs and then the next day that they're spiky, right? And Reese and I love cuddling when we go to bed. You know, we'll spoon or something like that or we'll always like interlock our legs when we're falling asleep. And he would always joke that my legs made him itchy <laughs> because they were spiky. Like that's just the way that it feels, right? Like they're literally prickly. He used to make a joke, <laughs> make a joke that he would pull like the cactus spikes out of his legs. And of course he doesn't care, like he would a million times rather me do, like be close to him than, <laughs> than not be close and not have spiky legs. But I was like, it bothers me too because it gets itchy sometimes and it just grows back so quickly and I just hate it. So then I thought, okay, what are my options here? Let's try waxing. I've never waxed anything before in my life. Maybe my, only my eyebrows, I think. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna Google this. I'm gonna buy the kit. I'm gonna try and do it at home. And then I realized that with waxing, you have to wait like 10 years for the all your brow, sorry, all your leg hair to grow out. Okay, I'll do that. Time defeats the purpose of wanting smooth legs. Like it's winter, it's okay, I can deal. So I started growing them out and I just thought, no, this is not it. I'm not gonna commit to this. Like what happens in winter, in summer when like I'm always wearing shorts or skirts or something like, Again, there's nothing wrong with leg hair. It's all personal preference. I'm not saying everyone needs to remove their leg hair. I feel like people don't know how like nuance these days. Like they'll hear me saying, I remember, sidetracked, I remember when I was going to the skin fairy to get my skin treated. And I said that I got the freckles on my shoulders zapped and I removed all the freckles on my shoulders. And the amount of comments, oh my God, what's wrong with freckles on shoulders? Oh my, wow. I, now, now, now I feel bad about the freckles on my shoulders. <sighs> I'm not saying I have like rock solid self-confidence. In fact, my self-confidence could greatly improve. But like if, if I see someone on TikTok or Reddit or Instagram saying like, I have this on my face, how can I fix it? 
If I had that same thing, my first thought isn't, oh my God, I must be ugly too. It's usually, oh my gosh, like that's so, that's so sad that that person thinks that they need to change that or whatever. Like I'm not gonna, I think some people need to work on their, and I'm not saying this in a, like, in a bitchy way because it's gonna sound like that. Genuinely, I know how much pressure women are, are under to, uh, to fit into the beauty standard. I, I mean, I stare at my face every single day. Like, I am probably the most self-aware of my face and can be the most critical. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But if me saying that I'm getting Botox in my forehead triggers you, I shouldn't even say trigger because I feel like that, that word is overused, upsets you enough to say, to leave a mean comment or a troll comment saying I'm a bad influence or makes you think that now you are flawed and you need to do what I'm doing in order to not be flawed. Like that, I feel like requires a bit of work on yourself. And I say that as someone who has been through that process myself. I'm, again, I'm not saying it in a bitchy judgmental way. Just because I got rid of the freckles on my shoulders does not mean, it's the same thing. Like we are so, women are told to be like as thin as possible, right? Thin, fit, athletic or whatever. It's like, you know, that's just the pretty much a global beauty standard. But if you saw a woman, oh, how can I put this? I see other people's beauty in a way that I don't see my own. I think we are a lot harder on ourselves than we are on others because I might see another woman out in the world and think her body is beautiful. Maybe it's not conventionally, not attractive, but it doesn't fit into the narrow, like, you know, definition of what a beautiful woman's body is or looks like. I think she's beautiful, genuinely think she's beautiful. But if I had her body, if we were reversed, I would probably be so critical of myself because I'm aware of what the beauty standard is and I'm expecting myself to fit into that. But if I'm looking at her from an outsider's perspective, I would think she would be stunning, like beautiful, but I wouldn't be able to see that in myself. I don't know if that makes sense. The things that I do to myself, if if my sister came to me and said, I'm getting the, the freckles zapped off my shoulder, I'd be like, <laughs> so silly. Like I would love it, but it because it is silly. But like, because it's me, and I wanted to do that, it makes perfect sense. And it's my body and I, if I can afford to do it or if I wanna do it, then I wanna do it. Body hair, that's right. Because I am saying that I wanna get rid of my body hair does not mean that I think people with leg hair are, if anything, it's funny. I see, I've seen pictures of women with leg hair and they're in, in the sun and their little leg hairs are like shining in the light. And I think that's actually, like, that's actually so cute. Again, because I want to remove mine doesn't mean that when I see it on other people, I'm disgusted or I think it's ugly. Ironically, I actually think the opposite. Anyway, oh my God, I feel like everything I say has a disclaimer. <sighs> Until I've been on the internet for a while, lounge face slash, I'm, I've, been, <laughs> I've been keeping this in the box. Like I have opened this probably like five or 10 times now. There's no reason for me to keep it in the box, but I just like, I feel like I'm opening a new mascara every single time I open the box. I'm gonna use the lounge face eyelash curler. I gave up on the idea of waxing my legs, no thanks. Then I thought, okay, what do I have to lose by trying the IPL device? Whenever I'm thinking about shaving my legs, it's always summer because I'm wearing shorts or dresses. But when I'm wearing shorts or dresses, I'm usually with fake tan and you shouldn't be using IPL devices when you have a fake tan. Not only does that have risks involved in itself, like having fake tan skin and then doing it like an IPL device thing, but IPL devices work off a of contrast, as I said earlier, so if you have darker skin, even if it's artificially tanned, it's not gonna be as effective. At least the device that I use, it senses your skin tone. So for me, I get the full power outage, power output of the device because I'm so fair. Whereas I put it on Reese and it only goes up to like half strength because he's more tan. And the darker your skin is, the higher the risks when using one of those devices. So this one adapts to your skin tone, which keeps your skin safe, which is awesome. So I thought, okay, well, in winter, I'm always covering my legs. And so I just will not fake tan them throughout all winter. And I will just, oh, I realized I didn't put any of that lip stuff on my lips. <laughs> the good thing about IPL is, as well is that you have to shave your legs before you do it. It isn't like waxing where you've got to grow the leg hair out. So. You, I, don't, I just really like that about it. Like you, you actually have to have shaved legs because it just gets closer to the hair follicle or something or the root of the hair, I don't know. Oh, and I even go over it a little bit, which I 
just personal preference, obviously. I might even just get some on my finger. For some reason, I like how it looks when it's just a little bit over the lip line. My voice is breaking. I can always tell when I've been chatting a lot when my voice starts breaking. My vocal cords aren't used to it. My little introverted life. Love! Does not suit my top at all. Does not suit this look. But I don't care. <laughs> okay, so long story short, it's been, I think it's been about two months since I've been doing it. And you'll have to watch the video for the actual videos, uh, for the actual yeah, proof or videos, but it's amazing. Yeah, I've still got some hairs left, but I shaved two days ago and there are so few hairs growing back. It's amazing and it's so irritating that I didn't do this years ago. It's so easy. It is so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. And I can do it at home in the comfort of my own home. Yeah, so I am doing my underwear area. I don't like doing that area as much because I still sh I, I shave, but I don't. I go with the grain, so that there's still a little bit of hair left. Was otherwise, ouch, itchy. I don't. I don't get ingrowns and that kind of thing. Surprisingly, it's taking longer on that area, which I don't know why. It should be the same kind of hair as your underarms, I thought. It is taking a bit longer there. I don't know why, but I'm still going to be working at it and seeing what happens. I'm sure I'll get there. I think it's worked really well around the bikini line, which is good. Yeah, it's just amazing. I'm really lounge face lash, obviously, stoked. And it's so weird because I was, I was using it before they reached out to work with me. Like I had been using it for probably a month. And maybe they saw me talking about hair removal or me using the IPL device again on my socials. Oh my God, this eye thing is creasing. How? You had one job. I swear that didn't crease yesterday. Braun reached out and I was like, oh my God. I love when that happens. When I'm already using and loving a product, specifically if I've already used it in the past and I know that I love it. Like those are the matches made in heaven. It's like we were meant to be together. <laughs> so I'm excited for that to go live. It doesn't hurt me or, or anything either. I am good with pain generally, but it doesn't, I don't think it hurts at all. And I have it, as I said before, like the full power output. I'm gonna use whatever's left on the wand. Maybe it's taking longer on the bikini area because I'm not shaving it like completely back to the skin. But like for the most part, the hair's gone. I don't know. I'll just stick to it anyway. You meant to do it for like, I think it's eight to 12 weekly treatments, basically until the hair stops growing back. And once you notice that you can stop. So it doesn't matter if it's eight weeks or 12 weeks, whenever the hair stops growing back, then you just go into a maintenance period where you do it every so often. I can't remember. Oh, my voice is breaking. I can't remember what the periods, what the time period is. Guess what I'm currently watching on my other monitor? A Simpsons hit and run speed run. I love watching speed runs. I am like a part of, I wouldn't even say I'm a part of it because I generally don't say anything except I randomly sometimes do talk to this person speed running, like while they're speed running. Certain games, usually Crash Bandicoot games. I exist in this little world where nobody else that follows me would ever see me. <laughs> Cause it's like, it's all like <laughs> teenage boys or like gamer girls that are in these communities. <laughs> And I basically don't say anything because I don't know the lingo. No, I do. I, I actually understand the lingo now because I've been watching them for long enough. But it's like that meme. <laughs> yeah. How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> That's what it feels like. I understand the lingo now, but I don't. I don't use it because that's, I just am too, I feel like I'm in, like a 50 year old person at, at a nightclub. Like I'm trying to <laughs> fit in and I just don't have any desire to do that. But it's just fun. Like I just love having something on in the background while I'm working. Crash Bandicoot, I like watching because it's nostalgic for me. But this game, Simpsons Hit and Run, I've never, I, I did, I do, I do actually have it. I had it, well, I mean, I used to have it and I've played it before, but like I don't have sentimental feelings about it. The streamer himself is just funny. And then yesterday I commented on one of the streams. First time, like first time chatter, which is the first time you sent a message in this person's chat. <laughs> so embarrassed. And he was talking about how he was streaming at a different time. So this is the first time I've actually watched him because he normally streams at night or something and he was streaming in the morning, like he's streaming right now, which is 1 p.m. And I was like, first time watching a stream. I usually watch crash streamers. What did I say? This is a great time. Cause he was talking about like if you should keep streaming at this time or whatever. This is a <laughs> great time. I'd watch more streams if we were there at this time or something like that. It sounds so cringe. It sounds so like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 
Anyway, anyway. Oh, I think I said loving it so far or something like his stream. And I forget that I'm in an environment that is full of like probably early 20 year old boys and they don't give out compliments. And so heaps of comments were like, oh my God, this person's being paid. They did this like command that in the chat, which shows you how long the person's been following the streamer for. And I wasn't following him because it's the first time I'd watched his stream. And it said, this person isn't following the streamer. <laughs> I just felt so exposed. Literally just because I sent a nice comment. It's like, no, you can't send nice things in these chats because they're all boys and boys can't give compliments to one another. Okay. A couple of the people that I watch know that I have a online presence thing and the other ones don't, I think. But I'm one of the few people that actually uses like my real name on there and like my actual photo because obviously I have nothing to hide. Whereas Twitch, it's so different. Like everyone uses aliases and never really shares their real name, that kind of thing. It's like a whole different kind of world. But yeah, so it is my little, it's like my only connection to being cool and hip, knowing all the terminology, all the Twitch, Twitch terminology. They're actually so funny. Some of these kids are so funny, like their humor. A lot of the ones though, at least the ones that I follow, because a lot of these people are like neurodivergent. A lot of them, probably like most of them have autism. And I think a lot of people on streaming on, like, at least speed running on, on um, Twitch, I feel like a lot of them do have autism because to be so consistently speed running, which is speed running if you don't know is like, completing a video game as quickly as you possibly can. To, be, to, to do that and to grind as much as they do into the same, to be doing the same thing over and over again, that is not an issue for a lot of autistic people, I think. I think like they like that kind of um, uh, pattern or routine or something, or I don't know, at least that's what a few have, people have said. So a lot of them are like neurodivergent. A lot of them are asexual, which is really interesting. <laughs> These are just things I've been noticing, which I don't know if that's an autism thing as well, like, Asexual is I think where you don't f you don't experience romantic attraction. Yeah, it's just like a, just a really a group of people that I never really would have interacted with either otherwise. And it's so interesting. I don't know if this is a boring conversation, but it's just something that I've never really spoken about before because there's no one else that I really know that watches Twitch or is interested in this kind of thing. I've always loved watching people play video games though. Like when I was younger, I used to love it. Love watching my brother and sister play like Crash Bandicoot or even when like my brother would play Grand Theft Auto Vice City and then I would play it and just use cheat codes because I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I do really enjoy it. It's, pro it's probably why I enjoy it now. And it's just nice to have company while I'm working. I used to watch horror movies all the time and I still do that sometimes, but putting this <laughs> back in the box, <laughs> brand new, regenerates while it's in the box. I'm so excited for these to arrive. It should be around like the second, the beginning of the second week of September. I'm so excited to be rid of all these stupid issues with the mascara ones. It's driving me insane. Normally I would actually put lip liner on, but what I actually like about this color is that, and this style is that it just looks really soft and blurred. I am having my first ever at home hairdresser's appointment in August and I can't wait. So what I, what I want to do, so as you can see, my hair's actually gone, gotten pretty long, but it's this part here. So that's all my natural color now. That is my natural hair color, as you can see. And I love that. I love, if you think, if you're thinking about going darker, but you still like being blonde, this is the way. This is the way. Because I want to better embrace like my natural hair color to some degree. And when you put blonde over this, and when the blonde moves, you get these bits of, you get, you get dimension rather than just this plain blonde color. It looks so much nicer. And then when I like plait it, let me plait it. I love looking at my hair when it's been plaited because, or braided if you're, is that an, an American term? You see like all the different colors coming through. All the different colors, like it's a rainbow. You know what I mean? Like different tones of blonde. That was probably actually not a very good example, but I just love it. So I get half a head of foils now. Yeah, this is a great way to keep, to have blonde hair. So it's like lighter on top, but then still be able to embrace your natural color a bit. So naturally, of course, this part of my hair is the healthiest. As you can see, it's like, there's still a bit, little, little bit of blonde at the very tips, but it's like, I don't have, it hasn't gone all ratty at the ends. Whereas this part, the very top layer, which is the bit that gets the most heat damage, the most bleach, etc., is, let me move my chair back further, is significantly shorter than 
the bottom layer. So what I want to do is essentially cut off the shortest layer of my hair to be the longest layer. So I'm going to have to sacrifice a lot of my length. See, I just love having that darkness come through in the blonde on top. Obviously it's a personal preference, but I just love how that looks. So I probably need to cut like a lot off. Maybe like, uh, I'll follow her advice. It doesn't look as bad when my hair's straightened, but when my hair's fresh out, fresh out of the shower, you can really see that this bit is like significantly shorter. So I probably cut that much off, which, you know, it kind of sucks. But if there's anything I've learned over the past few years, shorter, healthier hair looks 10 million times better than longer, rattier hair. hair. And it's going to grow out. It'll grow out, but it has a much higher chance of growing if the ends are healthy and then you're obviously using like good shampoos and stuff. Still swear by a Pantene. Come at me if you will. Actually don't come at me because I really don't care if you don't want to use it. Yeah, so I'm probably gonna have to end up cutting like that much off. But I saw a picture of me recently with shorter hair and it was probably about that length. And I actually really, really liked it. And again, it'll grow. I just want it to feel healthy at the ends. And now that I'm using really great hair care that works well for my hair, I'm not like, I'm being more delicate with, with my hair. I'm, I'm just much more mindful of how I'm, you know, working with it and treating it and drying it and stuff. Uh, so that's it. <laughs> Whoa, that was a lot of conversation. That was a lot. I said a lot in this video. I spoke in depth. <laughs> yeah, sorry if it gets a bit rambly at times, but the response to my rant on Instagram stories is there anything to go by. I think people actually enjoy them. Like I love hearing someone get angry about something. Like not like angry as in they're actually angry, but like passionately rant about something. Oh, it's con it's contagious. I also feel like I've let something out, you know? It just feels good to release. I think I'm painting myself to be like really angry or aggressive or something. Absolutely not. Like I am very, very chill 99% of the time. I think that's why I do like having a rant every now and then because it, it's that 5% that is, is allowed to roam free, you know? I set that 5% free. But otherwise, I'm just happy chilling, minding my own business. It's when a troll comes knocking, knocking at my door that the inner demon is unleashed. I wouldn't say it's a demon. A positive demon. A nice demon. A friendly demon. <laughs> Laura, Lauren the friendly demon. Anyway, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good note to end on. I hope you enjoyed the video! I shall see you when I see you, whenever that may be. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!